Fire crews are still on the scene of this three alarm fire on West Market Street in downtown. It's directly across from the new Derby City Gaming, which is still under construction. The Louisville Fire Department says the fire broke out uh, in this five story building just before midnight. The first floor, if you're familiar, is Osaka Restaurant. The rest of the floors in that building are vacant. The fire department says one firefighter was hurt here and taken to the hospital for treatment, but we do expect them to be okay. The calls still under investigation as of right now. You will want to avoid this area if you're going to be traveling in downtown. Several of those streets are still blocked at this hour, and if you're not normally in town, you know it can be quite confusing with the one-way street. So just be mindful of that if you're heading out this morning. All right, also new this morning, Metro Police are looking for witnesses to a deadly hit and run near Pleasure Ridge Park. This happened around 11 o'clock last night on Global Drive. That's near the Greenbelt Highway. Police say they found a person who'd been hit by a car. They died at the scene. The suspected car involved was also found there, but the driver was nowhere to be found. As of right now, there are no suspects, so if you have any information, you're urged to call 574-LMPD. So a lot of you in Highview are breathing a bit of a sigh of relief this morning. That's because we now know the plan for this house on Applegate Lane. This has really been the center of a lot of attention over the last couple of months because it's filled with all of these dangerous chemicals. Instead of it being burned down, which was the original idea, the items are now going to be mechanically removed. WHAS 11's Connor Steffen breaks down the EPA's decision to dismantle this house piece by piece. After months of waiting for answers, we now have one. But how will a controlled mechanical demolition work? Well, first the EPA will place a 17-foot perimeter wall around the property. Then using machines, they'll remove the roof and walls of the house. And scoop by scoop, remove small amounts of material, placing it into a large steel container partly buried in the backyard. The EPA will get rid of the material, but we have yet to hear specifications on where they'll dispose of it. These are actually very rare um, due to the circumstances throughout the United States. We can only find that this is a situation that's happened about eight times um, from some of the subject matter experts that have talked about it. Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg says safety is the number one priority. As we've said before, time is on our side, so EPA will be moving slowly to limit any risk to responders, and to neighbors and the entire neighborhood. That's why they'll store water cannons on site, create a fire suppression plan, and maintain EMS personnel on site through the process. Unlike the original plans for a controlled burn of the property, this will not require surrounding neighbors to evacuate their homes. However, Greenberg did say in the case of an emergency, Metro government will have plans for a controlled burn ready. Connor Steffen, WHAS 11, on your side. So you're aware here the homeowner, Mark Hibble, is still in jail. At his last hearing, a judge lowered his bond to $10,000 and said if he is released, he has to seek psychiatric care at Wellspring. Hibble is charged with wanton endangerment and for burglary for squatting inside the house next to his. There's increased security this morning near a Russell neighborhood bus stop after an incident where two people were shot. Police say it followed a fight on a JCPS bus yesterday afternoon. Police say the bus was transporting Eastern High School students. That fight escalated when students got off the bus at 24th and Magazine. When officers got there, they found a teenager and an adult who'd been shot. According to a letter from the school's principal, the teen is an Eastern High School student. Both victims were taken to the hospital and are expected to survive. Police say they know several other teens were involved in that incident. So additional security is expected at the high school for the rest of the week. That's not the only altercation that happened on a JCPS school bus. JCPS police are investigating after several middle school students were exposed to pepper spray on the ride to school. This happened yesterday morning after two adults actually got onto the bus while it was at a stop. Jefferson Town Fire and EMS say paramedics checked out 31 Carithers middle school students. Four were treated and two actually had to be transported to the hospital. JCPS spokesperson Carolyn Callahan tells us video from the bus shows one adult running down the aisle while they were on the bus or the reason they were on the bus at this point is still not clear. If there is a situation in the community or a situation with your family, please let your school know so that the school can help you. Uh, adults should never be getting on school buses. We should never be putting our students in situations that could impact their safety. School officials say it was the student who used the pepper spray 
which ACPS police say they could bring charges against the adults for boarding the school bus. The man accused in a deadly hit and run in Shively Sunday night could be released on home incarceration. Joseph Martin is his name. He faced a judge for the first time yesterday. He's currently being held on a $100,000 cash bond and the judge ordered that he could be released on house arrest if he pays at least 20% of that. Detectives say Martin admitted to hitting Dimitri Dryden Danzy and to using meth and drinking alcohol just before the crash. He's charged with vehicular homicide, leaving the scene and driving without a license. 28 year old Colin Taylor was also in court. He's charged in a separate hit and run on Dixie Highway. He pleaded not guilty to charges of leaving the scene and failure to render aid. All of this is in connection to Friday's crash that killed 19 year old Derek Wright Jr. The judge lowered his bond from $100,000 to $10,000 due to his lack of criminal history. Racing at Churchill Downs is back. The two week September meet starts today and you'll notice several changes and upgrades in response to the 12 horse deaths during its spring meet. Churchill is now using some new equipment to test the track surface more often. It's also adding resources to the veterinarian team and establishing a new safety committee. The first race is at five o'clock tonight.